Hey everyone, so before we begin with our video, we would like to make a small request. Kindly subscribe to our channel and like the video if it helps you. And also share it with your friends who may benefit from the same. We'll be simulating um, a sine wave PWM inverter. So to begin with, we'll need a um, sine wave block. A sine block. So we could do with this. We we'll need three of them and we'll need a sawtooth generator. Yep. <laughs> and then we'll need a power GUI block. We we'll need a compare block. And um, yeah, so the frequency, let's keep it 50 hertz radians per second. So it'll be two star pi star 50 and the phase will be 0 for the first one for the second sine wave generator the, the frequency will remain the same that's 2 star pi star 50 and the phase will be uh, 120 degrees so it will be 2 star pi star 2 pi by 3 and for the third sine wave it will be the frequency will remain the same that is 2 star pi 3 and the phase will either be minus 120 or 240 so we'll do minus 2 star pi by 3 okay and let's keep the sort to generator as it is so we'll create we'll make this plus and minus we'll do it for three of them Yeah, so once that's done, um, you are going to subtract each one of them from the sawtooth generator and let's compare it to zero. So if it's greater than or equal to zero, it should give a high and if it's lesser than or equal to zero, if it's lesser than zero, it will be a low. Okay, so once this is done, let's take a scope to see how the outputs would look. Take a bus. No, let's take a box. Okay. So let's have a look at how the output looks. So as you guys can see, um, for one cycle, let's take for one cycle, I think it will be better. Yeah, so as you guys can see, whenever the sine wave is high, the pulse hits are longer because the sine wave has a higher value than the sawtooth generator and it's the opposite when sine wave is in negative half cycle. So yeah that this will help us provide gating pulses
so let's call this n1 and let's make it global s1 make it global so this will be s1 is all the way so s1 will be in parallel with s4 s2 will be in parallel with s6 and s3 will be in parallel with s2 s s1 s s1 will be parallel with s4 s2 will be parallel with s3 will be parallel with s6 and s2 s5 will be parallel with So now we'll make our go-to blocks from two blocks so that can be extended to our inverter circuit. I can provide gating pulses. Once this is done, we'll need a DC voltage source which acts as a supplying voltage to our inverter. And now we we'll need MOSFETs, six of them. So MOSFET number one will be in um, the same branch as MOSFET number four and MOSFET number three will be in the same branch as MOSFET number six and MOSFET number five will be in the same branch as MOSFET number two. So let's just rotate the MOSFET and place them. And just copy paste all of them. So now let's add a three-phase VI measurement block, which will measure the voltage across the inverter. Now we'll need a series RLC branch, three-phase series RLC branch. and a grounding uh, block as well to ground the end of the series RLC branch. Now you'll need a scope.
to see the output. Now let's run the simulation. So that's the three phase um, output. Now if you split into three different scope signals, as you guys can see, you get three different phases and um, each phase is 120 degrees apart from each other. Let's run it for a longer time and see what comes. So, as you can see, you get uh, sine waves in three different phases. So that's how you do your uh, sine wave PWM inverter. Hopefully you found this video useful. Kindly like if you did so and subscribe to our channel if you're new if you want to see more such content. You can also check out our other videos. Thank you.